In this video, I'm going to be making my UK Scrap Addicts Creative Team layout. And this month in November, we're focusing on using stamps. I want to scrap list myself. I made this page that you can see um, last month and I had so many comments on it, lots of likes and lots of questions about how I made it. So I thought I would scrap lift that using the same set of stamps. It's really quite easy, but it does look really effective. So the stamps I'm using are these Wild Heart Leaf Stamps from Crate Paper. And I thought I would use the same stamps that I used on the example layout. And I use Distress Oxides. I've picked out some more muted autumnal colours. I've got some oranges, some pinks, some browns and some purples and some greens. So I picked out, I think I end up using about seven or eight colours. Now what you need is a circle template. I created this, was actually a cutout from my silhouette. It was actually like scrap from a circular design. Or you could draw around a dining plate or use a compass and then cut it out by hand. But you need a circle that almost but not quite fills the whole page. And you use that as like a mask. So I just use some washi tape on each of the edges. And then how I do the stamping is I choose the biggest stamp first. And I go around and stamp them, making sure that you change the angle of the stamp so that they're not all lined up. And I try and use the paler colours for the biggest stamps just so that they're not too heavy. So here's the second largest stamp and I stamp most of them, especially the larger ones, overlapping the circle and just go round in a circular motion, getting a nice distribution of colours. So I've moved on to a smaller leaf design now and I'm using a darker colour in the blue. Um, I will leave in the description a list of all of the Distress Ink colours that I've used. I think you can really change up how the layout looks by using different colours. I quite fancy doing a bright one. You could have used, used different stamp sets. You could use florals or words or anything that you wanted. Different camera icons would work well. And then I just use the smaller and smaller stamps in darker colours and I try and fill in all of the gaps that are left. With this very, very small stamp that I'm using in purple, I actually place two or three in clusters sometimes just to give it more interest and more variety. And the smaller the stamp, obviously, the smaller the gaps you can fill in. And now I've got a orangey red colour. I just thought it needed a bit more pop of brighter colour. And then that's it. And then you take off the washi tape, reveal the mask, and you've got your leaf design in a round circle. And now I've found some paper that I want to map my photograph in. I'm using a square coloured photograph. You could use any size and shape photograph that you want. I found this variegated paper that is from the Pink Fresh Studio Indigo Hill 2 collection and I like that the blue and the peachy colour matched well and I kind of frame it as if it's a Polaroid so I leave a larger gap at the bottom and then I stick it down in the lower it's on the inner circle but in the lower right hand corner so it covers some of the stamping and then I go about just adding some titles and embellishments. Just trying to get the balance of it right. I decide I want to put some word stickers down underneath the photograph. And because it's got so much stamping and interest going on with the stamping, I tend to, doesn't really need to have much else. Just trying to figure out which title and where I want the title to go.
that you could make the layering as fancy and as detailed as you like. You can make it as embellished and embellished as you like. And I'm just going through some tie cuts, trying to see if there's anything else that matches. You could also, if you know what embellishments and what die cut ephemera packs you want to use or what papers you want to use, you could pick your ink colours to work with them instead and work the other way. I then like to place some matching enamel dots around the stamping, so I'm just going through all my enamel dots trying to find the closest colour matches and I put them in groups of three, three different colours and I put I think four clusters on this page, maybe five but one down in the corner of the photograph and then four around the circular frame that we created. So I have clusters of three, three different sizes, three different colours of these enamel dots, but you could use anything you wanted. You could use sequins, you could do little doodles, um, you could use little stickers or you could leave them out completely. I quite like to try and keep the clean circular design of this layout but once you've done the stamping it does come together really quickly and you could put a border around the whole frame doodled or backed in pattern paper there's lots of different variations you could do but I thought I would just show you the main stamping effect of how I created this page I add my date and then I realised I stamped the wrong date, but I thought I'd just leave that little mistake in there for you, just to show that we all make mistakes. So I cover that up, and then I'll stamp the correct date. These things happen, and you can always cover it up, it's absolutely fine. And that's my finished layout. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I'll leave you with some close-ups, and I'll see you again next month. Thank you for watching. Bye!